Conan, what is best in life? To crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and to hear the lamentation of your women. That is good. That is good. All right, I took a couple of days to unwind, to reflect. I want to focus this podcast on a very specific topic and present very specific evidence for everyone to consider. And the topic is, was the relationship between Tua and Flores a reason for Flores getting fired? Some people have already got their minds made up one way or the other. But I ask you to always say, I might not think somebody's idea is probable, but a rational, thoughtful person has to say, I think it might be possible and let me consider it, even if ultimately I disagree. So I played the Conan clip at the beginning not for the reason you might think. When I was a kid, my mother took me to see Conan the Barbarian when I was 10 years old. I grew up in a very uh, wild household, very crazy. And so when I saw that movie, I would gravitated towards it. I remembered that credo, watched it hundreds of times. It was how I was going to live my life until a thoughtful teacher looked at a very screwed up kid in his last year of high school, when everybody else said, man, let this kid go out in the world and die. She gave me the tools to start a path of self-reflection, introspection, thoughtfulness, and consideration. By nature, I'm wild. But I've learned to tame that. And I think the last two podcasts, I let my old self go. Not that I disagree with everything I said. Some of the ways I presented it, maybe. But I believe in self-reflection. So I will listen to, uh, I read a lot of comments. A lot of people that have agreed with me in the past. Not a lot, but there was a handful that I really respect thoughts said hey you know what i agree with you maybe in part but this part i don't agree or i totally disagree with you maybe you should consider this stuff there was people i'd never seen before and they said you know maybe you're wrong you know whatever there's one there's one guy i think he's got mental issues but for the most part he was thoughtful considerate comments in opposition and so one one of the guys hover trout real smart guy i think he's like uh, he, he, uh, eco science guy, he's a professor or something, so he's smart. He's smart. So he said, hey, Why don't you go check uh, TD uh, Finn's talk? See what he's saying about this. So I did. And, and this guy, TD, he's got these like, long podcasts, like three and a half, four hours. I don't know how he does it. And I struggled doing 10 to 20 minutes. Anyway, so I went to a couple of spots, didn't agree with what he said. And I was like, Ah, man, you know, went back to Hover Trout. I said, uh, I said, you know, I don't agree. He's like, no, 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 go back. Listen to him. So I did. And I had listened to uh, TD Finn talks like about a year ago. Once I started this stuff, man, I don't got the time. So I listened to his stuff and uh, his show. That guy's smart. He's funny. It's a great show. I don't agree with everything he says. But what I realized, what I, I remembered, re-remembered what I liked about him is that he's intellectually honest. He'll say... I might have believed this, but did you ever think about this? He'll say, well, you know, I got this, this, and this. And you feel, I feel, he's intellectually honest, along with his other talents. And there were some different things on it that he had said that made me start considering some of my standpoints. So I began, I don't really sleep much. I got like ADHD, so like I don't really don't sleep much. So I slept even less. So I watched video after video of, Dolphins interviews and an article after article, just, you know, really trying to get to the heart of it, you know, questioning myself, questioning my stance. And that's what, how this podcast came about. Funny thing is, I came back 
So, you know, going through my comments, which I love, and I saw TD Finn's talk had said, you know, man, your stuff's pretty good. I, I, you know, I catch it. You know, I like it. So I was like, oh, it's really thoughtful because you got like a big show. So I emailed him. I said, man, listen, I want to support your show. I really, really like your show. I like what you're doing. And he says, oh, you know, you got, you, you got a thoughtful show. And so that really, along with what the other commenters had said, made me tame the beast and really try to present a thoughtful show here. So I'm going to get right into it. And I'm going to offer two bits of evidence, one video and one from an article that maybe, well, I think it should, at least in this one part about the relationship of two and Flores, give you pause on what's being said. I think it's a pretty concrete. All right, so let's take a look at the first image. I want to take a look at the definition of the title of the show. It's called Hocus Pocus. Everybody knows it's like the magic term, hocus pocus, you know, and, and say whatever. And blah, blah, blah. But the real meaning of it is a sham or distraction. Okay, you're doing something. The magicians, their masters of sleight of hand, they make you look here and then they go over here. They're doing something over here, but they make you look over here. So hocus pocus is a word to distract you, your auditory systems, so you miss something. Okay, so that's what hocus pocus means. Nonsense or sham used especially to cloak deception okay so with that note i want to take a look at this video this is a clip from stephen ross's uh, press conference announcing the firing of brian flores uh, what role if any the quarterback position played in this decision um was there a question over whether tua is your man for the future uh how much does deshaun watson play into it and was there disagreement over which direction you should go at quarterback? And was there disagreement over which direction you should go at quarterback? Well, first of all, let me be clear. It played no role in it at all. Well, first of all, let me be clear. It played no role in it at all. There was a series of questions given to Ross all about Tua at every single angle. But the one I want you to focus on, it says, was there a disagreement on Tua? Okay, so did you, Stephen Ross, and Brian Flores have different viewpoints on whether they should go with Tua or shouldn't go with Tua? Now, he said emphatically no to all of the above. Now, there was a bunch of questions there, and he says a lot afterwards. So I want to deal with that on a later date to really parse it and add information to back each point. But I want to focus on this one point. We cannot believe what anybody says when they're at a podium, when they're a billionaire, when they're doing this. But this is one piece of evidence that we should hold on to, okay? And it's a key piece because we hear everywhere that Flores had problems with Greer and Tua. I'm not talking about his problems with Greer. I'm not talking about problems with his control issues or any of the other litany of things that are being said. Not yet. But I want to take this piece of evidence and attach it to the source of 90% of all articles, all parts of conversation about Brian Flores' firing. Okay? And that is the Barry Jackson article that came out, I think like the 10th maybe, uh, behind the scenes fallout factors in wake of the Flores dismissal and Bears call Flores. It was updated on the 11th, but I think it came out the 10th, I think, I don't know. So when you, I was gonna like show all, like a dozen articles, but I think all of you have read the articles or heard the announcers or the, the guy, the talking heads like me saying da, 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 da. And what it usually wraps around is this particular part of the Barry Jackson article. I would go, I, if I was to you and you haven't read it in its entirety and really been thoughtful about it, I would. I thought it was a well-written article in the sense that it offered a bunch of unnamed sources contradicting themselves on many parts and really left it up to the, I thought it was a good piece of journalism because it presented the evidence and kind of really didn't come to a firm conclusion on any of it. And I like that. That is, 
I think, pretty good journalism we rarely see. But we, we see in this first part, every article just about that you will read, it's, and it, it's, this, this is going to be an irony here. As for the relationship with the quarterback, a source confirmed that angry words were exchanged during the Tennessee game, as the two media outlets have reported. Flores was furious with how uh, Tua was playing and let him know. Tua resented Flores' tone and his way of talking to people. Okay? So that's what we're hearing, and that attaches to all these other stories and everything else. And every article you read will reference pretty much Barry Jackson's report his article, uh, either in um, paraphrase or quote or link, but they never, ever seem to include the second paragraph after this. And this is the evidence I want you to focus on, not to absolve uh, Flores, not to say he's an angel or any of that stuff, simply to focus on this single point and deal with it and say to ourselves, is this true or not? Second paragraph after this that we never see. But a very close associate of Tua said their working relationship was generally fine and that Tua doesn't dislike Flores, joking that the dynamics were good enough for Tua to send him a Christmas card. That source said the two men could have continued working together and that the Tennessee innocent wasn't uncommon in the NFL during the heat of a poor performance. Now, I heard David Hyde mention it, certain aspects of this, and, uh, you know, it's funny because uh, the show, it's called Tobin, I, uh, it's a big show. I had a lot of problems with what he said about uh, Shane Gailey, and I was really aggravated at the poor journalism. But, and this goes back to when anger starts, communication ends. He was one of the most journalistic in regards to this quote because he broke it down in peace, in wholesale, and he mentioned all of this. But understand, there are two sources saying completely, saying totally different things. The context of one is Flores said blah, blah, blah after a game, which we can go through. Every coach has done that. Dave Hyde mentioned that. I think I'd mentioned that elsewhere in comments. Don Shula was known for cursing people out. Jimmy Johnson was known for cursing people out. Saban was known for cursing out. Zach Thomas, you don't think Tua got cursed out by Saban? You're crazy. Coaches, NFL, football in general is crazy. I told you I had a little dabble with a, a, a junior college that was kind of prestigious. I wasn't talented, especially anyway. But I got a glimpse inside the window, and I don't think people really understand. I was taken back. Walked on a thing, smiled, like, oh, yeah, it's great. I get to play football again. First day on the dead man squad or the practice squad, uh, no, the walk-ons, I should say, you know, we got to do drills. So I'm smiling. This is great, you know? One guy ahead of me should have been there. I mean, he really shouldn't have been there. Does a, like, a hard cut, blows his knee out. His knee goes in the wrong direction. That falls down on the ground. He's going, ah! screaming like, whoa, 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 what's going on? You know what I'm saying? The running back coach is like, get that piece of garbage off the field, killing my reps. I'm like, what is going on here? And I have, just in my little glimpse into this world, I have a dozen stories that are like mind-blowing. I can't even imagine what goes on the NFL level. And so for me, this first quote probably was true. But then you get into it like Tua resented his tone and the way he was talking about people. There's a little quote saying he said, F you. Do you think he's going to sit there and get into like some philosophical conversation about how I'm talking? I mean, that seems really, if he had just said he said F you, I believe that. The rest of the stuff seems a little narrative generated to suit a larger narrative. Now, it could be true. Maybe Tua said, but then he also have him saying F you, and then he's going to break down and talk to him in a nice, I don't know. It seems a little weird. But the key thing here is this is a source. It says a source. Who's the source? Did the source uh, work for the front office? Did the source have an ax to grind against Flores? How do we know that this is a reliable witness? 
or that everything they said is reliably true. We don't. It's a source. And if you go with sports media, for the most part, you get this thing a source with no definition, no description. But oddly enough, the very next paragraph has a very specific and rare description. So for a journalist or somebody who's parsing this, the reality would be you would look at this second quote and say, wow, you know, Jackson's giving us detail on this source. And there's a sense that in a hierarchy of evidence, this should actually be superior. But a very close associate of Tua. Why give that extra information? That person is coming out on a limb, revealing who they are, because it's not just a blind source like, hey, I saw this. Somebody somehow presented this information, whether Jackson talked to the source, or the source said this or whatever. But he said, their work relationship's generally fine. And Tua doesn't like Flores. Sent them a Christmas card. Now, some people say, oh, well, Tua is just such a nice guy. He's going to send him a Christmas. Source said that the two men could have continued working together. And this is why I believe this one. The Tennessee in, in, uh, incident wasn't uncommon. It happens all the time. Even worse stuff. I've seen punches. Uh, Jalen Ramsey was punching his own teammate and didn't even get half the talk of this. But this other one is making a very common situation, not like totally common, but fairly common, and blowing it up and making it about Flores's nature and personality. Doesn't that seem a little odd? But this is conjectural. But what isn't conjectural is all the articles that never mention this second part, and that would be called a hit piece or a bias. Not saying it's some mass conspiracy, but these people could just be pushing a narrative so they get hits, or they could be part of a media push. We have to remember the power of media. It's war. They have people who sit around and plan how to create this narrative, create that narrative, to get out of this situation, to get into this situation. I mean, billions of dollars are spent on this. And for me, and there's a much wider array of information that I want to present to say why I have my questions. But we have to remember, Ross is a billionaire. He's got a team of media agents. He's sided with Greer. There's a very strong possibility this is reality, this is not conspiracy theory, that they're creating a narrative. Because now all we hear is Flores is a terrible person, he was wanted total power, he ran over poor Greer. Even here, like, uh, uh, the same thing they said about Gates, which, you know, maybe it's true, maybe it wasn't, that he disrespected Ross. I mean, like, they running the same narratives. But again, remember who Ross is. He backstabbed Sperano, took Ireland on a plane. He had Dawn Aponte and Philbin, quick chaos, hired Hickey because no one was here. Then he stuck it to him and fired him right away to put Greer in there with Tannenbaum and Tannenbaum, Gase, and Greer, and, 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 uh, uh, and they're all arguing and fighting. And now, again, we have division. So there's a history of this from Ross with Greer in that mix. How can we so rapidly dismiss it? This is not to say Brian Flores is the nicest guy and he's the greatest thing since Wicker Baskets or something, or peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. But we've got to be honest. I mean, do we want to get to the truth? I mean, is, is it, or we just want to say, hey, Flores is gone. We don't need him. Let's just feel good about our Dolphin situation and totally turn him into villain and Greer and Ross into the hero. How many times have we done that? Not to say that that's not the case. Flores might be an egomaniac. He might be a bad guy. But there's a lot of information that says, mm, wait a minute, wait a minute. But the uni unified speech that's coming out there from the media pretty much with a few peeps here and there leads me to believe 
And somebody's at least not being journalistic, not with these two paragraphs in the basically the source of all these things. You never mention a possible other side when it's that strong of a case compared to the other one. Kind of odd. All right, so I want to take a look at a concept called the wrap-up smear. So let's take a look at this clip from some very prominent person. Called the wrap-up smear. You smear somebody with falsehoods and all the rest, and then you merchandise it. And then you write it, and they'll say, see, it's reported in the press that this, 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 and this. So they have that validation that the press reported the smear, and then it's called the wrap-up smear. Now I'm going to merchandise the press's report on the smear that we made. All right, if we all remember last year, two it took over. It's very unexpected surprise insertion. I'll get into that another day. Somebody, WAGA, he's a former or current BBC reporter, works with the BBC. He said, man, I stopped going over this uh, Gailey thing. And I said, you know, I was like, oh, you know, it's really important, man. It's really the pin feather for everything I believe. But in a way, I understand. So I'm going to put a little podcast together and we'll deal with that another time. But Gailey was inserted. Uh, Fitzpatrick was pulled and two was inserted. Very questionable, very surprising way. Two of them didn't perform well. He had some good moments, but as the season progressed, he descended. And at certain points, Flores pulled to it to win games. Many things were said about that circumstance. And again, we could deal with that on all day. But one particular thing, and this is where the, the Tobin thing, where he says, Gailey was trying to sabotage Tua for his man, Fitzpatrick. Chin Gailey is the nicest guy. Go back to his August 8th, 2020 interview. He says everything right there. All the questions, why did he do this? Why did he come here? He says it right in front of everybody. Even mentions Fitzpatrick. But no one mentions that thing. But they were saying he was trying to sabotage Tua. And article after article, this nice old man who came to the Dolphins to try to do something good and got screwed because he wasn't even involved in this decision. You see over and over and over again, sources or this, whatever, to, to, daily sabotaging Tua. But then we find out in May, Tua comes out and says, I wasn't healthy, didn't know the playbook, didn't know alerts, audibles. I and mean, he went through a whole list of things. This guy should never have been put in. We could deal with who put him in at another time. There's even a video of Flores in the 2020 season. So it was really tough inserting the way he did. He wasn't healthy. So it's like multiple evidences collaborating, uh, corroborating this. But again, there was a smear wrap up. Somehow, somebody put out, Gailey was sabotaging to it. And this guy is now carrying it from many Dolphins fans, from many sites are still reporting it. In fact, People, ESPN put a, had, took, saw a fake tweet that he had gotten fired confirming he screwed up and did all this stuff. And then, after it was out for like a, a while, took it out and said, oh, well, it was a fake account. And then two days later, Chain Gailey retired. And you still see reports today that says he was fired. This is a smear wrap-up. This is bad journalism. There is something very wrong here. This happens, and it could be happening. Could be, I, it, I could be totally wrong with Chris Greer, but it could also be happening with Brian Flores, even maybe just in a specific instance. Maybe in the totality, the majority of what's being said is true, but maybe there is a smear wrap-up as well. Not to say, again, Flores doesn't have culpability. But I want to deal with that, that stuff another day in more controlled terms. But I've been listening to a lot of podcasts, some really good stuff out there. I want to say, you know, uh, TD Fin Talk, it's a really good show. I really uh, will start listening to that more often. And, you know, and again, it's important to listen to things maybe you disagree with. I agree with a lot of the stuff he said. I even learned some stuff uh, through film takes that he had that, you know, I disagree with some too. But you have to, it's more important to listen to people you disagree with than those you agree with or else you become in a, a circular vacuum of thought. So it's a great show, 
he really seems like a good guy. And I just really want to promote that show as a real quality show. There's other ones out there. I got to start watching more. You know, I saw some things. I was like, oh, I didn't like that. But you got to really listen to multiple and many things from somebody before you judge them. So I'm still learning, yeah. But I'm going to keep working on this hocus pocus, media hocus pocus thing. I'm going to present more. Hope you found this evidence at least curious to maybe say it might be a lot of what we think, but it might not all be what we think. And maybe it isn't what we think to simply question. So thank you for staying to the end. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I really try to put my thoughts into this one. I hope you got something out of it. Comments mean the most. It really, again, help me recalibrate and rethink. And uh, subscribe and like help us to Google overlords. I like to stay in business. I have no aspirations of being the biggest guy around town. You know, I, I just want to present good information, keep my mind active by talking, engaging, and creating. Mine won't shut off. So it's really fun for me. And, you know, they, Ace Pride pays me too. So that's great too. So anyway, it's Curtis. Catch you next time. Go Dolphins. Be well. Start building your own online sports book today by getting signed up with acebred.com service that allow you to book action on sports from all around the world.